Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, July 20th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Patrick Murphy. Patrick, we've talked about Jordan Hancock on the show every day for the last couple of weeks. Let's make it another day. He made it official over the weekend. He committed to the Buckeyes. We pretty much knew that was going to happen when he decommitted from Clemson, but obviously good news for the Buckeyes that they have flipped the high four-star corner. And again, you know, they didn't flip him from some little podunk program. They flipped him from Clemson and he lives pretty close to Clemson in the state of Georgia. So huge get for the Buckeyes. Absolutely. We've, we've talked about various defensive backs in this class that were committed that, you know, guys that have not committed. This was, this was a huge landing for them. Obviously, Kerry Combs continues to uh, do well on his, his second tour of duty at Ohio State. Um, the booms coming from the Woody Hayes Athletic Center continue to, uh, to roll on in, and, and Hancock's a good one. You know, Clemson uh, obviously was, was excited about this kid, got him to commit early on, but the recruiting cycle continues. Ohio State uh, continued to pursue him, knowing that, that there was a, an open door uh, – I guess you could say there and eventually we're able to, to persuade him to come, you know, a really talented kid. Um, someone that I think Ohio state fans are, are going to, to learn to love just like they have a number of uh, members of the secondary, especially under Kerry Combs. So a big win for the Buckeyes for sure. Speaking of Kerry Combs, let's get into what uh, tweaks we might see from the defense this year. Maybe it'll be more than tweaks. We'll get into offense in a moment, but curious to get your take on what changes, if any, you expect with a Kerry Combs-led defense compared to a Jeff Halfley-led defense. Yeah, I think we'll definitely see see some differences. Um, Ryan Day made it clear that you know he wants to operate out of a, a similar base defense, um, but I think you have to tweak it not only for for the coaches. I've, you'd mentioned. Uh, the the change in staff there, but but for the players, you know, you you lost three members of the secondary. You've got to fill those holes, obviously, but do so in in the best way possible uh, that fits those players. You know, what what do you have now um, without Jeff Okuda, Damon Arnett, Jordan Fuller, and and we've talked about guys that could step in to replace them. But you know, is it is it a better decision to go with two safeties instead of the single high safety we saw last year? Um, you know, these are probably questions we could have answered a little bit better had we been able to see more of spring practice. But uh, yeah, I think there'll certainly be tweaks. I think that you know, uh, Kerry Combs spent the last few years with the Tennessee Titans, um, obviously learning from from some of the best minds in the NFL that defense down there was great so he's gonna bring uh he's gonna bring little things that we've we've seen before and maybe some things that we haven't to this defense um and but when push comes to shove I think you know Ryan Day's defense is going to continue to be um diverse aggressive um like we saw last year but uh, yeah I think you'll you'll see variations on on what 2019 gave us Offensively, obviously, Mike Yurcich is no longer around, but the entire offensive staff, uh, other than him, uh, is back, led by, of course, head coach Ryan Day. Kevin Wilson is heavily involved. I don't think there's going to be, you know, a lot of, I don't know, they're not going to really tweak too much on offense, but I do think they're going to be more of a passing team this year. They're not going to go away from the run, but last year they had a 2,000-yard rusher, and Justin Fields, quote-unquote, only threw for 3,000-some yards. I think this year, if they play enough games, well, I'll just say this. If, they, if it was a normal schedule this year, I think Justin Fields would throw for over 4,000 yards easily. It might push Dwayne Haskins' record of near 5,000 yards if they had enough games. They're not going to have that many games this year. We'll get to that in a minute. But what changes, if any, do you expect on offense this year, Patrick? I agree with you that I think this, this team is going to be more past, pass first, just given, again, the, the personnel they have. You know, Heisman Trophy contender uh, coming back at quarterback. He was a finalist last year in fields. The receiving core that they have led by Chris Olave and, and Garrett Wilson and obviously the, the young guys that have come in. Um, so, yeah, you, you've got those weapons. You've got an offensive line that returns three starters. You're going to use that. And, and we saw even last year that, that they were able to open things up in the passing game quite a bit. Um, you don't have a J.K. Dobbins, as you mentioned, which which changes things. And, and the, there is obviously uncertainty at the running back position. So at least early on in the season, I could certainly see them, you know, throwing to open up the, the run a little bit until somebody or some buddies, I guess, um, establishes themselves as a rusher. But, yeah, I think just just because – they have so much talent um, in, in the passing game that they're, they're going to use it. Ryan Day would be silly not to. And, you know, the, the, the number of returners is obviously higher on the offensive side of the ball. So I don't think it'll potentially look as different. But, yes, I do think they're going to throw the ball more. And Justin Fields, 
like you said, depending on how many games could be in for a monster season. And you know, I mentioned the word Heisman. That's, that's a pretty big deal um, for any program, especially Ohio State. Yeah, he was a Heisman finalist last year. I don't think I don't think we forget that, but it almost gets lost in the shuffle. That's you know we think yeah he had a good year last year. He had a great year last year. Like he had a fantastic year last year. You know, be a Heisman finalist. It was so cool that Ohio State had two Heisman finalists. You know, two guys at, actually at the ceremony. That was really cool with Chase Young and Justin Fields. But yeah, I think you know that's another reason. I just think we'll get to the schedule here in a second. Like I said, that's just. You know, if something would happen to this season, it would be such a shame all the way around. But this particular Ohio State team, especially on offense, they could be electric, so led by Justin Fields. And you have to think he's going to be better in year two than he was in year one, second year in the offense, second year as a starter, all of this. You know, he's got, you know, although he did lose, you know, J.K. Dobbins and lost some good wide receivers, they still are stacked on offense. This might be the best offensive line we've seen at Ohio State, at least since 2013. And in the last 40 years, I think it might be the second best. Uh, could even challenge for the best. So Justin Fields, he could, he could be maybe the best player in college football this year. Absolutely. You, you know, you said something I think Ohio State fans have, have thought about quite a bit is with this kind of team, led by Justin Fields offensively um, with what they were able to do last year. Coming back, you expected this to be a national title contending team. And if this season is altered or, or doesn't happen, God forbid at all, um, you know, that's, that's a kick to the gut for sure uh, when you have such a talented group um, and a number of guys that can go pro after this season and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I, I second everything you said, and it would just be a shame to, to miss – um, on a season that like this could be um, obviously Ohio State's going to continue to recruit well there are going to be great Ohio State teams ahead in the future but you know it's been since 2014 since Ohio State obviously won a national title this is a team that could do it you would hate to see that be taken away for, from not only the the players and coaches but the fans as well um, you know, they've, they've built something special there and, and hopefully we get to see um, enough of it that that we you know it, it can go down as history assuming it lives up to to the hype um, and, and as one of the top teams we've seen. Speaking of this season, I know you've done a lot of research on this. I'm curious to get your take on this. What It's a question that everybody's asking. What might Ohio State's schedule look like this year? Obviously, we know that they have called off the non-conference games. Do you think they'll add a conference game to get 10 regular season games in? Do you think they'll still be, you know, obviously the Big Ten championship game, bowl season, college football playoff as usual? Just what do you think the schedule is going to look like this year? It's a lot of uncertainty for sure. When we talked to Gene Smith after they announced the conference only games, he said there was still a lot to be decided there. It sounds like the athletic directors around the Big Ten want to go to a 10 game schedule. Already, you already have nine scheduled Big Ten games. Um, so I would imagine that, yes, you can just add another game there um, within the conference. If you're looking at, at you know, kind of the layout of the schedule. I think you can move games around. The idea with, with this whole thing is to have some open weekends where teams, if you, for whatever, for one reason or another, have to reschedule a game, you, you have space to do that. So I would imagine that you would have three bye weeks, um, off weeks, however, you will, whatever you want to call them, spread throughout the season. I would think in order to, to make scheduling better, you would have, or easier, if you do have to reschedule, you would have, a number of teams have the same off weekend weekends so that it's easy to, to reschedule these games. Um, maybe even have everybody have the same off weekends, which would be unfortunate for, for viewership, but would make it a little easier to, to reschedule. Um, and, you know, I would think you could just take those nine conference games you already have scheduled, give every team one additional one, a, a crossover game from the other division and, uh, and, and go from there. And, you know, that a 10 game schedule, given everything that's gone on, in my mind, if you can get that done, that still allows you to crown a Big Ten champion. You can play that game, um, you know, at the at the beginning of December if if things work out as planned. And then, depending on what other conferences do, I don't see why, you know, depending on the virus and whatnot, you can't play a, a college football playoff. Now, will it be as normal? I'm unsure about that. I've seen some people suggest maybe they do an expanded uh, playoff this year just to give – more teams at an opportunity. I don't think they do. I think you see the normal four teams um, and, and they, they just run it, you know, as, as a strange year. Um, but uh, yeah, that would be how I'd lay it out. I wrote something for our site recently where I kind of broke down um, just a hypothetical schedule and, and move some games. Obviously you want to try and get um, the, the divisional games early on 
uh, to get those done. I think that would, that would make a lot of sense. Um, I, I put the Penn state game just when I was drawing it up first, just to have an exciting game out of the gates. Um, you know, I kept Michigan at the end of the season. I think Ohio state fans might riot if that game got moved. I know that that's been suggested and, and it's an interesting idea, but I, I just can't see that happening, even though, you know, there's, there's concern about getting to the end of the season, but I think if you can, you can work that out, you can have those open weekends, you can get to 10 games. I think that's enough of a, a season to, to, to be able to still, like I said, crown a big 10 champion and, and play in a college football playoff. And, and I imagine other conferences do th- something similar. So for fans that are wondering, so you look at the schedule now, you take the three non-conference games off, and you look at it now, Ohio State is quote-unquote scheduled to open up on September 26th against Rutgers. So basically we can throw that out the window. You think it's not going to be Rutgers to uh, kick off the season? Um, it, it's tough to say, right? I guess it would – in my mind it makes sense to, to reschedule some of these games so you get, you know, your best games get, – get things going early. You know, obviously fans were excited about – the the potential trip out to to Oregon and that game's not gonna happen. So why not if you're if you're already gonna have to reshuffle the deck a little bit here, why not have a have a big time game early on? Um, you know, and, and obviously there's logistical things that that I didn't take into consideration when coming up with a hypothetical schedule. But um, you know, if and, and and another thing is you don't need to wait until the end of September to to begin games. Um, you have the entire month almost of September to, to play. So, you know, if, if you can get games in early before maybe the, the virus picks back up again, um, you know, there's been talk about the, the fall and what that might look like um, with the virus. You know, can, can you get some games in at the beginning of September and, and maybe save you some time if things get worse um, with the virus? So I don't know. I think we're all guessing right now until we hear for sure what, what the Big Ten wants to do, what other conferences want to do. Um, but yeah, I would, I would start it early and, and let's start with a banger, you know, let's, let's get out there with, uh, with the Penn state, Ohio state, or, uh, you know, Ohio state is scheduled to play Nebraska this year. That's always a fun one. One of those games that would just you know, start the season off. Penn state, Ohio state in the opener would be really cool. It would also be eerie yeah. Beaver stadium with no fans there. Um, maybe they'll be uh, pumping in uh, white out noise. I don't think that would have the, the same effect. Uh, it's, you know, give them credit. It, it's, and it's just when Ohio State's there. It's not like if you go to a Penn State-Purdue game, uh, it's not that crazy in Beaver Stadium. But when they play Ohio State, they look at Ohio State as their biggest rival. They do the wideout. You know, they get – you know, they're all in. And it's, it's pretty impressive, and it's a tough environment. So uh, that's going to be crazy, uh, Ohio State, Penn State, with no fans in the stands. One more thing on the schedule, then we'll get to uh, a little hoops recruiting to finish the show. So I assume if they keep the nine Big Ten games that are on the schedule now in whatever order, and they add a tenth for Ohio State – I imagine the extra crossover game would be Purdue just because of proximity. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Again, with my hypothetical schedule, I, I was trying to have some fun with it. I, I gave Ohio State Wisconsin just for another sort of marquee Big Ten game. But I do think logistically because of, of travel, you know, you want to try and, and, and keep that as minimal as possible, which is why they're going to conference-only games. Um, and the familiarity and whatnot. Yeah, Purdue would make a lot of sense. You know, it's, it's, it's an easy trip for Ohio State to make. Um, it, yes, I think it would be another road game just to keep the schedule balanced. But Purdue makes a lot of sense, I think, for, for that other crossover game. I would, I would prefer to see Ohio State play Wisconsin again, but uh, maybe we'll get that in the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, they seem to play almost every year in the Big Ten Championship. Obviously, a couple years ago, Ohio State played Northwestern. I don't know. I think maybe Minnesota might pull it out this year. But then again, Minnesota, they had their chance last year at home against Wisconsin and couldn't get it done. So I think it's going to come down to those two teams, Wisconsin and Minnesota. All right, let's finish the show. I haven't talked basketball on the show in a long, long time. This will be pretty quick, but this is a big deal. Ohio State, they're – it's not a sure thing, but they're probably going to land the number one player in the state of Ohio, Malachi Branham, on Wednesday. He will make his decision. For those who don't know about Malachi Branham, again, number one player in Ohio in the 2021 class. He is the number five shooting guard in the country, number 27 overall player in the country. So he is a big-time player. And he's at a school some of you might have heard of. It's Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary. He's not going to be the best basketball player to ever come out of that high school, in my opinion. Uh, that might be somebody else. But uh, this is going to be a huge gift for Chris Holtman and the Buckeyes. They can land Malachi Branham, and it looks like they will on Wednesday, Patrick. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is a top prospect, as you said. 
Um, Chris Holtman and, and his staff have been in on a number of top guys. Obviously, this past year they had their their best recruiting class, at least on paper. Um, we know now a couple guys have transferred out of that, but this would be a, a big addition for Ohio State uh, to add to the 2021 class. Um, he's a you know a shooting guard that ideally would pair uh, pair in the backcourt with with uh, Michi Johnson, who's coming in on the same class, another four star guard um, that that they're adding off another Ohio prospect. So. Yeah, this would give them two scoring guards that, that can really uh, drive the team forward. Um, like I said, this would be hit, hit Chris Holtman's top-rated prospect that they've landed and a huge get. You know, uh, It looks like programs like the, the likes of Louisville and Xavier are in the running for, for Branham. So, um, yeah, this would be a big win. As I said, he's going to be a, a top player wherever he ends up. And, and as you, you mentioned, it looks like it's going to be the Buckeyes, but we're going to find out Wednesday. We sure will. I'll be surprised if it's not the Buckeyes. Very surprised. Things seem to be trending in an excellent way for Chris Holtman and crew. Great stuff from Patrick Murphy. Really appreciate it, Patrick. Happy birthday to you, Patrick. Yesterday was Patrick's birthday, so happy birthday to Patrick Murphy. And thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. Again, our shameless plug, if you like the show, listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. Same deal for Spotify, YouTube. Just click the subscribe button if you like the show. It helps us out a lot. We really appreciate it. Thanks again to the listeners. Thank you. Thanks again to Patrick. I hope everyone has a great day. Let's try the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Mm-hmm.